In Lean Six Sigma, we often use Pareto charts to help us better understand our process. It shows us where the most common source of defects are, and we want to address those. Now, before we jump in, let me mention if you're interested in a free white belt certification course, you can access one at sixsigmasociety.org. So now let's talk about the Pareto chart. So really what it does is it helps us display and sort the causes of process defects. What are the source of those things? And it follows something called the 80-20 rule. Now, first, let me give you a few examples of this 80-20 rule so you get some idea of what we're talking about here. So 80% of traffic tends to be on 20% of roads. So there's a small percentage of roads where most of the traffic exists. And 80% of wealth is in the hands of 20% of people. And 80% of sales come from 20% of our customers. Given all the revenue our company may generate on an annual basis, the truth is that most of that comes from a small subset of our customers. Now in Lean Six Sigma, we would say that 80% of our defects come from 20% of our inputs. We may have lots of inputs to our process, but there's probably a small portion of them that are contributing to the defects that we're seeing. So here's an example. Let's say that we're seeing shipment delays in a shipment process, that's a defect. And we're trying to understand what's causing that, what's contributing to it. And so we track data about shipment delays and what's causing them, and this is what we see. Most of the time a shipment gets delayed, it's caused by payment issues. So with a Pareto chart, it's gonna be sorted by the most occurring issue on the left and the least occurring issue on the right. So we've got payment issues, stockouts, inspections, and local traffic that are contributing to the shipment delays. But it looks like payment issues are the most occurring issue. Now here's a question. We could adjust our shipment process to avoid local traffic in this case, but would it help? And so if we go back to our Pareto chart to look at the sources of those defects, we see that local traffic is really just a small contributor to those shipment delay defects. And so it's, it's probably not gonna help us that much. Our Pareto chart he helps us to think about what our priorities should be. We ought to try to address payment issues first to solve most of those defects. Okay. And I really like this cartoon. Uh, so it's showing a Pareto chart. And um, you can see that the biggest priorities are actually falling on top or gonna fall on top of the guy who's getting too caught up in the small details, the things that just don't matter as much. Some causes are just not worth our time. A Pareto chart is a great way to prioritize where we should focus our improvements. So here's another example. This is gonna be talked about in a separate video when we walk through Pareto charts in Microsoft Excel. But let's imagine you uh, own properties in New York City and you're trying to analyze complaints submitted by your tenants. Because what you wanna do is try to minimize those complaints to keep customers and tenants coming back and to make your properties desirable. And so you prioritize the complaints on a Pareto chart, you sort it, and you see that a good portion of the complaints are coming from unsanitary conditions, the, it's just not clean, and issues with paint and plaster. Maybe there's paint that's peeling or something like that. And so if you're trying to figure out, okay, what can I do, what should I start with if I'm trying to address defects, minimize those complaints and make my properties more attractive, you'd wanna start with those issues on the left-hand side. Focus there first, and then kind of work your way across the Pareto chart. 